now tuned into the greatest. The, the, the Run with Manny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. I appreciate you tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast, you know, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something you agree with, you disagree with, you like, you dislike, go ahead, shoot me a call, 219-413-9405. And of course, we'll play your take back on our next episode. Now, shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this episode. Get $20 off your first ticket purchase when you use the promo code The Run Podcast. This code can only be applied for first-time users only in the mobile app or on the website. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to go ahead, download SeatGeek, and, and shoot my way to one of these games. Create me an account real quick so I can go ahead and check out the Cubs or maybe the Sox because, you know, they tickets going super cheap. <laughs> anyway, look, 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 man. The focus here is way bigger than baseball. It's a big controversy right now, and it's actually been driving me crazy. Quite honestly, uh, everybody knows Kaylin Clark and, and her adjustment in the NBA hasn't been as easy as some people may have expected it to be. Uh, and, you know, people are kind of changing this whole competitive dynamic to something that it's really not, man. And it's driving me insane. So to give you a little bit of backstory on it, um, a couple days ago, we seen Chicago Sky versus Indiana Fever and Kaylin Clark. Um, she got tossed around. Uh, and got pushed. It was they upgraded the foul call to like a technical foul, foul a flagrant foul. But you know, it, it was kind of a just a, a physical play. It was slightly unnecessary. But Kennedy Carter was the one who did it on Chicago Sky, um, and just kind of bullied Kalen Clark around. People just took this just way out of proportion, and this is what drives me crazy because they're mad about Kalen Clark getting bullied. I mean, you know, obviously it was unnecessary and it shouldn't have happened. But the times that we've seen Kalen Clark do this in 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 college with Iowa, there was no big discussion about it. The times we've seen her yell and cuss at people, call people names in the WNBA, there has been no big discussion about it. But as soon as this shit happens to her now, all of a sudden it's time that we really, really make a scene. And it's time to change rules and policies and upgrade files to technical files and stuff like that. That's the part that concerns me because Personally, I just feel like if she wasn't really struggling right now, if she was having a good time, trash talking, giving us 30 points, 40 points, and then, you know, pushing people like she was doing in Iowa, having her way like she did when she was in college to these professionals in the WNBA, people wouldn't have anything to say about it. It would be, oh, she's such a fierce competitor. She's a savage. It would be all kind of talk like that because that's exactly what it was when she was in college. And we've seen this play out the exact same way in college during that LSU and Iowa game. Both times. The times where she lost the first time. Yeah, we, she got some trash talk. People were talking trash back to her because she was doing it all season. So where the hell was the problem? Nobody cared or blinked the eye when she was out here competing at a high level. But as soon as other people start competing at a high level against her, it's, oh, it's a personal attack. It's why are they jealous of Kaylin Clark? It turns into whoever just did that has no sense. They should be out of the league. They should receive this. They should receive this penalty. They, re- they should receive that penalty. And it's insane because it's just it's just people competing at a high level. That's all it is. It's not bad sportsmanship. It's it's not a a thing of hatred toward anybody. It's just athletes competing at the highest level. We've seen this happen year and year and year years prior to this point in the WNBA. This has been going on for years and years. You know how many rookies there's been in the WNBA that's gotten bullied like this? Go back and look at the footage of Candace Parker playing the Detroit Shock. Look at what happened during that game. Candace Parker was a rookie and we've seen how great she turned out to be, but it was a big ass brawl happening because a rookie was getting punked. So because of that, if you look at that footage, you see her teammates come help her out. The only problem I have here with Kaylin Clark being shoved like this and being tossed around game after game is the fact that her teammates are not coming to help her out. 
All of the physical play has been there. That's what's expected when you compete at a high level like the WNBA. None of this is new. You're going to get bullied. You're going to get pushed around. Don't cry about it. Get stronger. That's the kind of approach you unfortunately have to take if you're trying to become a, a great in a league like this. Because crying about it, and obviously she hasn't said anything about it, you know, which is, you know, good. I'm glad she's not complaining about it. But fans crying about it and stuff like that, it's just unnecessary, man. And and it's a damn shame, bro, because you're, you're almost stripping the game of the things that people like the most. Not necessarily fighting, but just a competitive edge. That's the part where people are picking the game apart. And if you don't want to watch it, then don't watch the damn game. But the game of basketball has been played this way for decades and decades. It's been leveled out, you know, to be less aggressive and less aggressive as time has went on. But nonetheless, it's always been a physical game, man. So in the 40 games that's been going on in the season, someone, you know, they're they're trying their hard, they're trying hard to make a name for themselves throughout the course of the season so they can come back and play the season after this and the season after that. So when they have a lot of spotlight on them playing against a team where they know everybody's going to watch, the Indiana Fever with Kaitlyn Clark, they're going to do whatever they can to make sure they're on the their top game, playing the best basketball that they can be. And if that means they get a little bit aggressive, then so be it. Who cares? And don't sit here and tell me, oh, well, you know, she, what she did wasn't playing basketball. I mean, well, she was obviously playing some sort of damn basketball because she finished with 16 points and six assists. So, I mean, she did something. And I think it was actually 19 points. I need to double check on that. So don't quote me. But it, it, she actually she was playing damn good basketball here. So the only problem is who this happened to. This has happened year after year and year time after time after time but it's just the fact that it happened to Kaylin Clark and people feel like oh they need to be thanking her they need to be nice to her they need to put her on some sort of pedestal because of what she did at a previous level not in the W she ain't did shit in the W let's keep it honest let's keep it a buck here she hasn't accomplished a damn thing in the W so everybody who's like oh they're jealous of Kaylin Clark that's the reason they're doing this jealous of what somebody who ain't never won shit in the NBA in the WNBA are you kidding me? Come on, man. Like, is it, come on, man. You, you, I, it's, it's tough and it's so frustrating because, like, this is, it's such a sensitive topic to some people to watch her get tossed around. And it's like, she's just playing basketball, bro. She's playing basketball. And somebody just came and chin checked her. That's all it was. It was an aggressive move. We've seen her literally do the same exact thing on a lower level in College of Iowa. And if you don't believe me, look it up. Look up Kaylin Clark Savage moments. <laughs> I guarantee you find the same type of stuff. So, yeah, that's that's frustrating as hell, man. Anyway, look, we got some more stuff coming up. I got some news for the run coming up in just a second. Of course, obviously, if you got something to say, shoot us a quick talk, a, a quick call, 219-413-9405. And, of course, we'll play your take back on our next episode. That number is 219-413-9405. And hey, man, I want to hear what your what your thoughts on it is. Maybe I'm talking directly to you. <laughs> Maybe you're on my side about this. Who knows? But definitely want to hear what you got to say about it. Um, anyway, look, we got some news. We're going to take a quick break. It's halftime. We'll be right back. A la Madrid. Congratulations. Real Madrid, they defeated Dortmund in the Champions League final 2-0. And this is Real Madrid's sixth time winning the Champions League in 11 years. They haven't lost the final since 1981. Congratulations one more time to Real Madrid. And NBA, Celtics Kristaps Porzingis will be turning to the floor for the finals. Shams reported that Porzingis completed multiple scrimmages in the past few days, and he's expected to return for game one of the NBA Finals versus the Dallas Mavericks this Thursday night. And in the NFL, the Minnesota Vikings have now made wide receiver Justin Jefferson the highest paid player who's not a quarterback. Justin Jefferson will receive a total of $140 million over four years with $110 million guaranteed. 
crazy, crazy contract right there for that man. But I guess the numbers are saying he's the best receiver in the league right now, whether you agree or disagree. (laughs) For those NHL fans out there, the 2024 Stanley Cup final is set. The Oilers will take on the Florida Panthers. And at 2,543 miles, this is the furthest Stanley Cup Stanley Cup final between two cities in NHL history. The San Diego Padres infielder Mercano has been banned for life in the MLB. In an investigation, the league found that he was violating the gambling policy by betting on major league games. It said Marcano only won 4% of the 231 MLB bets that he placed. Now, four other players have also been suspended for betting as well, but only for one year. So the Oakland A's, Michael Kelly, the Padres, Jay Grome, the Phillies, Jose Rodriguez, and the Diamondbacks, the Diamondbacks, Andrew Southrank. I think that's how you pronounce it, Southrank. But anyway, um, those guys, you want to check on them because their suspension is only for one year. So, They will be back in the next few years if they decide to come back. But speaking of the MLB, there's been a dominant team out here in the New York Yankees. Usually I don't cover too much baseball, but man, the Yankees, they've been on a tear. And you got to give a special shout out to Juan Soto and Aaron Judge, man, because these two guys have really been the, the topic of discussion for the New York Yankees, bro. Um, Aaron Judge has been on a tear per usual around this time of the season, but it's, it's having Juan Soto there to help him out in this uh, run that they've been on has been exceptional, bro. Because when you look over the course of Juan Soto's career, obviously we know he got that one World Series uh, with the Nationals, but always been an exceptional hitter. He's disciplined. He's powerful at the plate. Um, and he's got multiple awards, Silver Slugger awards. And this is a guy who experienced some early success in this league. With the Yankees, they kind of gave him an opportunity to showcase his talent on the biggest stage of baseball and show everybody that he's still that guy. And he's still one of the top hitters in this league because this man is he's been tearing up the floor as great as he's been. What's crazy is he's still behind Aaron Judge in home runs. So Soto, he currently has 15 home runs, 46 RBIs. And that this might be a little bit different because I know there's ongoing games, but there's only one person in this team above him in home runs, which is Aaron Judge. But even though Soto is performing at this high level like this, it gives the Yankees a lot of breathing room for, you know, injuries, the knickknack injuries that may come along throughout the season. But even outside of Aaron Judge and and Juan Soto, you still got Stan, who's been crazy, too. Like the Yankees got a lot of good hitters, and I'm pretty sure uh, it, they're they're still leading the MLB in home runs right now. So, you know, with a little over 100 games left, I think Aaron Judge is on pace for 80 home runs last time I looked in a statistical sense. But don't quote me on it. But, man, it, it's, it's definitely been solid for the Yankees, man. And All right, anyway, look, for some pure entertainment here, we got a hypothetical here. We usually don't bring hypotheticals into discussion because – You'll never really know what they'll actually be. You'll never know the outcome. Anyway, there's been a big topic of discussion between Draymond Green and Rashid Wallace, 2004 champions, the Detroit Pistons. If they would beat the 2017 Warriors with Kevin Durant, Rashid, of course, is talking about, man, we will whoop they behind. And then, of course, Draymond Green is saying the same thing. Now, statistically, There is a slightly different breakdown because obviously, you know, one team shoots more three pointers than a different team did in that era. One era was more so about playing in the paint. Take what you can from the mid range game. And that's where you've seen Rashid Wallace and Rip Hamilton thrive during that time is they was getting a lot of mid range buckets. Chauncey Billups was hitting the three pointers. And on occasion, you would see Rashid, Rip and Tayshawn knock down some three pointers. But the Warriors, we know they were running guns, shoot threes every time you can, shoot threes up and down the floor. Time after time, every play you're shooting a three pretty much or it's a fast break and and you're getting a layup. But with Kevin Durant on that team, immediately a lot of people want to side with Kevin Durant just because we've seen how that impacted them going against LeBron and the Cleveland Cavaliers. But I I think there's a bigger discussion than just, oh, this team is going to get mollywopped and stuff because... A lot of people don't realize, bro, the Pistons was deep, man. And the Warriors still ain't really had no center. Draymond was the main one that's going to be protecting the paint. And if I got to go Draymond, Garden, Rasheed, Wallace, hell no. 
Rashid was a skilled, skilled player, bro. A lot of people forget this. Rashid was one of those guys who could post hook you with the left hand and post hook you with the right hand. Either way, it was just, it, it was natural for him. He could hit you with a fadeaway post spin with the right hand and a fadeaway post spin with the left hand. It was just so unique to his position. And I know we always talk about how the game has evolved and basketball has evolved to another level where there's positionless basketball. You see point forwards and stuff. But I will tell you, some of these power forwards back in the day would still come in and dominate. That's one of the positions that's not too crazy if you played it the old way of being physical and being able to have post moves, being able to score in the mid range. That aspect is still the same when you talk about what a guy can do at that power forward position. I don't think Draymond could defend that. Offensively, Draymond damn sure ain't giving Rashid Wallace buckets. Damn sure ain't giving Ben Wallace buckets. I know it's going to be tough to guard Steph Curry, but it don't matter who you put on him. He's going to get his 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 threes. He's going to get those up. KD is definitely going to be a tough guard, no matter what. Tayshaun Prince can guard KD as much as he can, but it's going to be tough. Both sides is going to have to fight through a lot of screens in this game. <laughs> but let's be real. You talk about chasing Klay Thompson and Steph Curry. Rip going to have to chase one of them. Tayshaun going to have to chase one of them. KD still going to be the big outlier there. I don't know how else you're going to switch it. But even on the defensive end for the Warriors, it's still tough because they going to have to chase Rip Hamilton around all these screens. They're going to have to chase Chauncey Billups. Sometimes he is going around screens, but mainly Rip Hamilton getting the easy buckets. And the, and the Pistons, man, they they wasn't an always shoot a three, shoot a three, or shoot a mid range. It's just get get the ball in the hoop. So we seen how they dismantled those Lakers that everybody thought was going to win back in two thousand five, but it didn't happen. So of course I got to side with the Pistons in this. I, I'm always going to ride with the Pistons, but I, I genuinely think Pistons might have a shot. KD is the biggest out, uh, outlier, man. So it, it would be a six or seven game series. Just in all fun and all fun. But anyway, look, man. Hey, that's all I got for you today. I appreciate you kicking it with me. Appreciate you hanging with me. Um, of course, uh, shoot us a quick take if you have anything on your mind. 219-413-9405. And of course, we'll play or take back on our next episode. Um, let's just hear your thoughts. I want to hear what you're thinking about the playoffs between the Mavericks and the Celtics. We know that's coming up. Follow us on the social for, for all of that content from last episode. Um, go ahead, check that out. Follow us on the social at The Run Podcast. You can follow my personal as well at I am Manny Wilson. But I'm going to leave y'all with this side note here. Uh, or or the, not another side note. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm going to leave y'all with, with some positive words for the day. Uh, and I'm going to just say it like this, bro. If one way doesn't work out, you got to find another. No matter how long it takes you, no matter how frustrated you may get, if one way doesn't work out, you got to find another. Because you got to keep going and keep pushing for your goals. So no matter what you do, you might be annoyed. You might be frustrated. And if that's the case, if you're overly frustrated, overly stressed, take some time. Regroup. Refocus. Ease your mind just for a second. And then go back at it to figuring it out. Because if you don't keep trying, you will never get there. So I'm going to leave you all with that. Accept that however you will. And, and take that knowledge however you want to pass it on. Share this with a cousin, a brother, an aunt, an uncle, a niece, a nephew, anybody you can think of, a neighbor, your side piece. Please don't be having those side pieces out there if you're in a relationship. Uh, <laughs> look, man, I'm, I'm out of here. All right. I'll see you all later on next week. Enjoy this weekend because it's, it's about to be Thursday, Friday, Friday. By the time some of y'all hear this, but enjoy your weekend, man. Appreciate you for tuning in, and we'll be back later on next week, and so on, and so on, and so on.